Okay, uh, this is the second part of a two-part video walking you through how to uh, integrate scenarios into financial models. Um, what we did in the first video is we built a drop-down menu in Excel using data validation. Um, and then we built some scenarios down below and we connected those scenarios to the drop-down menu using the offset and match formula for revenue growth. And then we're able to connect, uh, and then we're able to sort of tie that revenue growth figure the way we would normally um, back to the face of the of the income statement. We're gonna do, so your exercise was to go in the template and try to do the same thing on your own for operating expense margin, interest expense, and tax rate. Uh, we're gonna wrap that up here, essentially an identical exercise to what we did uh, with revenue growth. So let's go ahead and do that. In fact, I can just, I'm gonna get rid of this border here and I can just copy and paste with just a couple of minor um, alterations, I can just sort of change the formula. I can move the, um, if I want to get operating expense margin, I can move the the best case, base case, and weak case uh, array down to the right place. Notice I didn't actually have to do that. It would still pull correctly because it's still best case, base case, weak case. It doesn't care where the array is. But just to be consistent in case we ever deleted one of these scenarios, it's nice to sort of keep consistent where this, this is supposed to go. And then we're gonna hit Control R, uh, Control Shift R. That's again using the Boost uh, Excel add-in, which you can download from wspanalytics.com. Enables you to um, to use uh, shortcuts specific to financial modeling. And we do the same thing for both uh, interest expense as a percentage of revenue. We simply bring it down, and the same thing down below here. You could have, without the mouse, gone in and, and done this as well. Key is always that the um, the reference point needs to be right above um, the area in the offset function where you're going to grab data, and then the array uh, needs to reference the, the the data that's in the drop-down menu. We're going to hit enter. We're going to again Control Shift right across, and now with the work that we did in the first video, we have a completed model that I can that is totally responsive to the drop-down menu. If I want to see what the results would look like under a best-case scenario. I see them here. I can bold. I can bold that and see how how the the best case scenario looks as opposed to a weak case scenario. Obviously, as we'd expect, the weak case is far worse than the best case from a net income perspective, and that's a little bit of sanity checking for us to make sure that we did it correctly. Um, again, to get uh, more in depth in, in any of these topics, visit our website at www.wallstreetprep.com. Hope you enjoyed this quick lesson, and we'll see you soon.